Alright guys, welcome back. Thanks for stopping by. So today I'm going to show you how to do a GFCI plug, ground fault sort of interrupter. And um, what I've always seen is the line twisted for the power, but this wasn't twisted and you need to know which is which. So I just figured this out, but if they're both, they're both straight and not twist, you don't have a twisted pair to signify the line for the power. Um, how to do how to figure this out is you touch the wires together on the other side um, basically you have to find out where the the load side goes and because I looked at the blueprint I know it goes over I know it goes over to this box right here so I'm touching these together and then um, how how I figure that how I figured this out, um, I'll show you right here. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my meter right here and it's on the continuity setting. And basically what that means is it makes a loop. I don't know how to explain it really, but what happens is um, basically it identifies wires. So it's basically a loop. So right now when you touch it together, it makes a sound because it's connecting in a loop. So when I tie the wires together over there and I connect it over here, it's connecting the loop and making it into a circle. So if I touch these together, it doesn't do anything because it's the wrong wire. But if I touch it to these two wires, it makes a noise. So that signifies that that wire over there is my load. And then this is the, gonna be the power wire. So I know this is the load, which goes over to that box over there, and this is the power, whether that goes back to a panel or to a different box, this is gonna be the power. Well, basically that's the home run anyways, because um, it says on the blueprint. So now I'm gonna make up the box. All right, so here's the plug right here. Just gonna open this up. It's got the, comes with a plate, so that's nice. And then here's the plug in itself. Looks like this, and then on the back it says line and load. So the line is the power, which is this these two wires right here, and you need to keep them paired together. The power is going to be on the gold screw, and then the neutral with that power wire goes on the same on the opposite side on the silver screw. On the line side, that's a pair right here, and then the load side, which is this wire which feeds to the next box and to the other plugs in the room um, is the top one and that's the load and basically what that means is when this trips um, it kills all the rest of the plugs in the room so you don't have to have one of these at every single box it protects the feed down the line so if you have seven plugs it'll trip all seven at once and then this is where you reset it and then they all come back on from here so let me get started here so um someone stripped these out but basically all you need to do is stab them into the back and then screw it down tighten it with the screw plate right here there's a little plate in here as you can see so usually i just usually i just leave them a certain length these all the way twisted. I'm going to make them all the same length and basically you can just leave them a couple inches outside of the box since I just pushed a whole bunch in there. You don't need them that long. So there are a couple inches here but then when I pull it back out it's like 10 inches so you just want to leave it nice and folded up in there. And then really you only need like half an inch on these just because they don't stab that far into the back and you don't want a bunch of wire hanging out the back exposed and i think i got a couple ideas for tomorrow's video and then scratch the paint off of this ground there's some green paint or whatever that color was that's on the wall right here. Okay. 
Okay, so then you're gonna grab your screwdriver. So you can grab both of them. I got one color for each, one for Phillips. I sometimes call it the plus, and this one the minus, or just the straight blade, flat blade, and the plus, or whatever. So you can start out with the Phillips, and then I usually start out with the ground, and you can wrap it around the screw if you want to, or you can just put it under the plate and tighten it. I usually find that it works either way, but if you just put it under the plate, it works just as good as long as it's super tight. And I'm just gonna lightly tighten these down real quick, and then I'm gonna hit it with the flat blade and tighten it all the way. And then I usually start with the line and work my way up. So these are the loads right here, and these two twisted pair right here, which you can't see. Twisted right here is the line. So I'm gonna start with the neutral. See, even if with that half inch, it's still sticking out a little bit, so you don't really need much at all. So I'm gonna start here with the neutral, and then the then the line side power right here on the opposite side. Um, and I'm putting it, I'm putting the screws in the same way that when I tighten the screw, it's gonna not back it out. So I'm putting it on the left hole but if you have two wires that you want on the line side then it doesn't matter but basically if you're just having one power in and then a power out you want to put it on the left side and that way when you tighten the screw down it tightens to it and not loosens it um so then you have your load side and then you have your neutral, and then put that on the left side again. So if you have like two lines, that means basically you want something that doesn't trip. So if you have a refrigerator or something, or whatever the case may be, you have your power coming in right here, and then you want a second set of power. You want a, another plug coming off of it, but you don't want it to trip. When this trips, then you keep that on the power side, and then it is always powered and not on the not on the circuit that trips if that makes sense i th think i kind of butchered that but tighten this one down on the left side and then grab your flat blade dropping stuff here and you're going to want to tighten these down very firmly See, I'm getting like a whole like screw turn on this one. And then over here. Lastly on the ground. See how loose this is? Just keep going. And that should be pretty good. And then this will probably need a box extension as well, just because it's in there more than a about quarter or more. So I'm gonna throw this on here real quick. Kind of just bend these. That usually works, and the screws look like they'll be long enough, but if not, I got longer ones. I might need caterpillars. I'm not sure yet. Basically, the easiest way is just to put the screws through like that. Grab the drill. Find your holes. Kind of just got it shoved in there. A lot of stuff in the way back there. And just tuck that back a little bit further. I might need longer screws, these might be short. Yeah, I'm gonna go with some longer screws here. So I got some inch and a half. Right here, and it 
take these screws out. Easiest way to take these screws out. I think the top one you have to unscrew. The bottom one you can just pull out. Usually just grab it, push it. Okay, I guess not. Sometimes you have to back these out with a with your screwdriver or with a drill. Got people screaming in the hallway, I'm sorry about that. So now we'll be have no problem reaching our screws. Like I said before, you want to make sure it's level against the wall and this way. So as you can see, which you probably can't, it's leaning really far this way. So there's a few ways you can fix that. You can either take your flat blade, stick it in the corner, and then bend it like that, which that turned out pretty well. Um, or you can kind of take your channel locks, grab it, but you don't want to mess up this edge because this is exposed. So usually I kind of just take the screwdriver, go like that, and I'll get my drill again. And that's pretty tight. I'm gonna grab my level. My, sorry, my tool belt's on the ground, so this is a pretty tight space right here. And then you just wanna put your level on the side of the plug right here and then it needs to go a little bit to the left so I can just kind of tap on that that's pretty close but it's kind of got crooked again so I'm gonna bend it back out and that kind of un unleveled it right there so sometimes you just have to keep going back and forth until you get it right. I mean, it's just kind of fighting me right now. So that's almost there. Might need to go a little bit this way. Too much. Sometimes it just takes some time. So that's pretty good right there and then I just it was loose before just to get it in place and then I tighten it down with the flat blade just kind of check it it's pretty solid right there and then I push on it pretty good right there so that might be about it looks like the top is giving in a little bit but I don't think it's going to be a big issue. Looks pretty solid. I don't think I really need any caterpillars there. And it's still perfectly straight. Straight against the wall. And then you kind of want to eyeball it like this. It looks like it's looks like it's sticking out a little bit on the bottom. So you can try to tighten that up a little bit. Because you want it, you don't want it leaning into the wall on the top and sticking out far on the bottom. So one way is just to tighten the screw down. Uh, it looks like it helped a lot. So I think that's about it. Grab the cover here. And then sometimes depending on if you tighten it too tight, it'll bend the screw hole out. Since the screw holes are right above the, the device screws, sometimes they can get bent. So you wanna be careful not to bend those. These are some of the shortest screws out there just because they usually go onto the sheet or they're on the sheetrock side instead of going into the device. They usually sit on the sheetrock. That makes sense. So it kind of looks like that. Let me see if it's still level. Still pretty level, could use a little bit to the right, but it's totally in the bubble, almost perfect. 
Um, so if you usually get the plug straight, your plate will be straight. And so let me grab the camera real quick. And this is what it looks like right there. You got your test button here and then your reset button up there. There's no power right now, so I can't test it or anything, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this. As you can see, you want it straight this way and then straight this way. This plate kind of sucked in because these plates suck and um, to get it tight to the wall, it kind of sucks in, but as you can see off of the wall, it's pretty straight. It could go a little bit to the left. I'm trying to hold the camera in the right position, so it's not too bad. So that's what it looks like installing the GFCI. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe if you're new or if you want to see more videos tomorrow. See what I got in store for you then. Thanks for watching, guys. God bless. Have an awesome rest of your day. Peace out. All right, guys, one more thing. Um, the easiest way to make sure this is straight off the wall is basically just check the gap here and here. Um, if you ignore the sucking in of the plate, um, it's pretty even there. It's like, I don't know, an uh, eighth of an inch or something, eighth of an inch here. And then same over here, you wanna check the gap is the same here as it is there. So it's pretty close, about the same another eighth if it's sucked in too far at the top you'll see it's really skinny or no gap and then on the bottom it would be whatever out this far and then um it would be sucked in too far at the top so this looks good here pretty good so that's about, about how you want it and then make sure of course your screws are straight looking nice and pretty and uh that'll be about it guys thanks for stopping by see you tomorrow one more thing, my, a few of my coworkers watched some of my videos and one of my coworkers wanted a shout out. So Curtis, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll see you at work tomorrow. See ya.